So before I pick this guitar up and play and let you hear how accurate it is, we'll start at this end and we'll go right to the top and explain exactly what was done. First of all, all the bridge pin holes needed to be reamed to seat the string properly. The slot ahead of the bridge pin hole needed to be opened up to tighten up the strings all the way across on the focal point of the saddle. This saddle was actually too far forward, so you saw that I had rerouted it a little bit wider, but I ended up canting the saddle back like this and bringing the focal point right to that back edge all the way across. And as it turns out, that lined up beautifully. So this guitar, like many guitars I've worked on, has never been in tune since the day it was made. Wait till you hear it now. Next, we removed all of the frets and we sanded more off this end of the fingerboard and slightly changed that neck to body angle because the strings are so high that all the notes were playing sharp. So by sanding the fingerboard down, we actually changed the trajectory ever so slightly. Now when we refretted, we refretted with a 90 55 thou fret, so 55 thou high. So now when I run that straight edge along, it just kisses the rosewood. So we got a pretty good match there. I'm very happy with that. And then finally, we compensated the nut. Now you, the three bass strings are negative value. The G string actually comes forward a little bit. The B string goes into the nut a little bit and the E string actually comes forward a little bit past the end of the fingerboard. There's the end of the fingerboard there. It comes just forward to that. So that's what we had to do. Now this type of nut with the slant on the bottom is typical of the higher end Martin guitars. It is a very difficult nut to do. Now, of course this job was made even more difficult. You can see this chipping here. And there's a few gashes. There's a gash in the headstock here. and The last guy that had changed the nut had filed this shelf so it really made it a nightmare to change. Anyway, it took me a couple of attempts to get that nice fit in there. Anyway, it's perfect now so let's have a listen. So those of you who know me, you know that I prefer to play minor nine chords or ninth chords to really check the intonation and get those really close intervals. Here's a few garden variety chords. G, first position. C, D, and E. You've seen me do this before. I play like a C form. So this is a G chord, but it's played that your typical C form at the uh, eighth and tenth fret. Move it, move it down to the third and fifth fret for a D chord. And a C chord. Again.
obviously we'll do these intervals of a, of a sixth with a tenth on top. So to get a real good cross section of all of the chords along the entire span of the neck, I'll kind of jump across the strings like this as well. Or 